Hi guys, it's Flamon from Flamon Miniatures and today I have for you the next free video tutorial about painting my High Elf Archer Miniature from the Last Alliance, of course. And today I will be focusing on painting his cape, which as you might remember from the movies, looks a bit like if that would be metallic, silverish kind of a material. We don't know exactly what it's made of, but it it was looking very spectacular. And I saw many times people painting these capes uh, in just in grey colors or in blue colors. In my in my city, most people have been painting them in dark blue colors. <clears throat> and today I would like to present to you how to paint it uh, in this more metallic way. I hope that I will get closer to the movie original prep, but well, we will see where the journey will take us. And while this video is for free, it's possible only because of the support of my great supporters on Patreon. You can always join my Patreon and see more of my video tutorials. It's only ten dollars for a month and I have there already around 300 video tutorial and PDF tutorials so I would say that it's a pretty good deal for ten dollars 300 tutorials you would you definitely uh, you can definitely find there something for you especially if you are interested in painting non-metallics okay so that being said Let's start working on the miniature. I oh my god, it's been a while since I since I started working on him. I didn't have time for more. So <clears throat> one of the most important things about painting this material is that if I want this to look metallic, it has to be a bit reflective. So I will need to have other colors reflected in in the cape. Of course, keep in mind that I'm not painting for gaming. Of course, when you're painting for gaming, you want to finish your miniature much quicker. So it's it's a completely different thing, but maybe you will want to paint some hero in more spectacular way than, than I'm your guy when it comes to teaching how to paint. Okay, so first you need to decide where you want to have the reflection of light. And one of the things that you can do to determine that is to follow natural natural light that you can have in your in at your desk. So I would say that these parts are the most reflective. I will mark them with blue gray blue gray pale paint. <clears throat> okay. Mm, one more thing before I start. Brush cleaner, very useful thing. Um about to soak a cotton ear pick in it. Okay. And now I'm gently rolling over the miniature with it. These parts which I'm about to paint. What it gives you when you do this, it uh, removes a bit of grease that is left on the miniature because you always will touch the miniatures, so we are leaving a bit of grease on them. And it also makes the surface a bit softer and it's easier for it to absorb paint so thanks to that it will be simply the easier to paint because the paint will stick to it better just try not to push the ear pick try to roll over it <coughs> Mm. 
Okay, and I will be painting with a uh, Winston Newton Series 7 size 2 brush because it's a very comfortable brush. Okay, so I think that it would be the best if I would paint the reflection in here, in this place. That's what I, that's where I can see that the light from my desk lamps is reflecting the most on the miniature. And if you want to make your detail look metallic, you not only need reflections of other colors in it, you also need to create contrast. That's why I'm not painting the entire cape with it, just a bit of it. <coughs> By it, I mean this blue-gray pale, which I will use as the brightest color in here, because when I watch, when we watch the movie, these uh, capes are really dark. In the meantime, while this while this is drying, well, I'm taking black gray. <clears throat> and with it, I will try to paint shapes on the clock in these areas. So I'm trying to touch it with the side of this brush, with side of it, not with the tip. Thanks to this, I will be marking only convex elements. And now I'm using the tip. But I can see where the convex details are. So I'm painting over them. Yeah, okay. Mm. Okay, now it's easier to see them. It's like I need to have a bit of black paint between these details, but I also don't need too much of it because black is a very strong color. And if I will have it on flat surfaces, it won't look natural. And this detail, if I understand correctly, should be a leather strap that holds uh, this part that holds arrows. <coughs> Okay, now I will paint side of the clock with black gray and I will use it also in here but not but only there where we have uh, the golden armor because here I will want to have blue colors. I will be changing shapes of reflections in here uh, from time to time, so so it will change the shape. From. Things will be changing in here. Okay, just just that. Okay, here's neutral gray. <clears throat> these are three most often these are three colors that I'm using most often because well black and gray and steel elements are like 60% of anything that I paint
forgive me, but I'm still a little bit sick. Uh, okay, now medium blue. No, no, is it dried out? It is. I haven't been using blue for a while. Such a nice color. Okay, so now I want to have reflection of blue in here on on the cape. So I need to have blue area. should make reflections of armor too, but I don't want to. Okay, so now I will be creating smooth transitions between colors. And this is going to be quite interesting. But first let me show you, because many people are saying that they have problem with my technique. So first you take a bit of paint on your brush. And then when I want to paint with it, I am, mm, let's call it sharpening the paintbrush because I want to have pointy end. Okay, something like that. And thanks to this, I'm also removing uh, a bit of paint. And then I can, thanks to that, paint tiny lines like this. And see if I push my paintbrush harder, I leave more visible mark and then I try to do it barely scratch the surface and then I'm barely leaving any mark and that's basically what I'm doing you can do the same thing with a uh, color pencil it's yeah the, the thing is that to don't have too much <coughs> paint on your brush and to have a pointy end Okay, so now uh, when I'm blending layers together, I like to have mid-tones and to make them, to make them, I'm using this tool, it's called Core or Clay Shaper, I'm not sure, it's, it's like rubber, it has a rubber end, whatever, silicon, I don't know what it's made of. Okay, and so now I can, I like to make, create my color mixtures in the percentage of like 60% of a brighter color and 40% of a darker color, obviously. And of course, it's not like I have perfect 60 to 40 mixture. Um, I'm just trying to say to you more or less how it looks like to me. Uh, the whole point is to create some color that is in between these two. This is between, of course, these two. Because then it's much easier to create smooth color transitions. <coughs> okay. Okay, that's all I can give you. Okay, so now I'm doing what I just presented to you on a piece of paper. I'm removing most of the paint 
in a piece of paper. I'm sharpening my brush and now I'm painting tiny and now I'm painting a lot of tiny stripes between these two layers. And I'm being chaotic and I'm trying to barely touch the surface. Thanks to this, I'm leaving really thin, really uh, thin layers of paint that are drying really quickly. Because they are re drying really quickly, I can paint a lot of them quickly. Thanks to this, I have uh, smooth color transitions on my miniatures. Now I take this brighter color and I create a bit of stripes with it. To make sure that my color transition is perfect. <coughs> no other details. And this is the stage that is taking to me a lot of time. So you can see this step in two ways. If you're a gamer, then you can see this as annoying waste of time because it takes a lot of time to create this transition smoothly. But you can always make them less smooth if you're just gaming that you can do it really quickly, don't try to make it super, don't try to create super gentle delicate transitions. You can just be quicker on this step. Or if you are a painter like me, then, well, it's actually kind of therapeutic to paint tiny things like that and see how the view in front of your eyes is changing. Like when I have problems in life, painting frequency is actually very helpful for me. Because when you're focusing on such uh, work that you do the same thing over and over again repeatedly and the view in front of all your eyes is changing because you're creating pattern, it's somehow very therapeutic. I'm not going to create here my most delicate color transitions because Maybe on the video you won't even see that something is not super smooth. <coughs> I don't know. And now, because we have this blue color in here, I need to create uh, special mixtures for it. I need to right now mix this blue with gray and maybe add a bit of brighter blue. I have sky blue in here. That's also trade out, obviously. I didn't use it in a while. Okay, here it is. And as you can see, it's very pastel color. So it won't be as saturated as sometimes I was able to paint. Uh, saturated colors is a topic for a completely different video, so I won't talk about it too much. So I'm trying to once again, now I try to do something like 50-50. I don't know, we'll see where this will take us. If you are new to painting, you need to have in your mind, keep in your mind the uh, knowledge that you can mix any colors together and create something different but <laughs> of course some colors if you mix them will just create brown but in this case what I mixed is blue with gray 
and gray is basically black and white paint mixed together. So you can you mix any colors with gray and then your color uh, will just became brighter but paler in this in this case or darker and paler if you use darker gray but yeah you can almost anything mix with gray almost okay so now tiny stripes around here Now the thing is that you can paint with any color on any color you want. Uh, I mean the stripes that I just presented to you. So now I will just try for the first time create smooth transitions between gray and this blue mixture. So I will paint tiny stripes over the blue elements. And the thing is that you can dilute the paint as much as you want. If you dilute it more, then your stripes will be more transparent and we'll need a bit more time for drying out but it will be easier to mix to create color transitions between different colors okay just a little bit of blue as you can see it's a gray pastel blue now Okay, and now let's work with it over here. As you can see, the blue color and gray are starting to blend together. Okay, <coughs> now I need to create a mid-tone between blue-gray and neutral-gray and I obviously do it in the same way that I just presented to you. So 60% of blue-gray paint and 40% of neutral-gray. I guess I use too much of neutral gray I hope that now it will work Okay, I think that it looks good. It should work just in the right way. <coughs> now, let's blend 
layers together with this mixture. Okay, and now when I look on this cape, I see that it needs a stronger reflection. <coughs> I thought that. Sometimes blue-gray is okay, but it's the matter of colors around it. And now because we have white sash and very bright armor, um, this needs a bit more reflection to look metallic. So I will mix white paint with blue-gray pale. I will try just like 50-50% something like this <coughs> Let's see Well it's always the matter of um, how things look It's like I can have some idea but later when I, I after all I need to paint things and see if they look in the way how I intended them to look. And right now it's a bit too dark. But now instead of creating another layer of color, <clears throat> I will just uh, highlight it directly. So let's take this paint. Let's sharpen my brush. Okay. Okay, and now let's try to create the same thing that I was creating before. So a lot of tiny stripes that are quickly disappearing.
Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, now it looks metallic. Obviously. But I can make... I think that it would look better if I make stronger reflection over here. Okay. Okay, no. So that's the first side of the clock. And now we have these parts that I actually forgot for a moment about. So neutral gray. I already see how much time I spend on this miniature. Yeah, obviously, if I would be painting for gaming, I would prefer to uh, finish this guy in like half an hour. But like I said, uh, being a painter is about painting, not about having a painted miniature. That's why I'm selling absolutely almost everything that I ever painted. I'm more about the process than the final product. Now let's highlight it with. Oh no, first I can see that this shape is not perfect. Now much better. Now blue gray pale. Okay, and now just reflections with this brightest mixture.
Okay, so as you can see, back the back of my elf is unpainted yet. So we have a clean slate, except for two things. This, oh my god, I really don't remember how it is called in English. Let's call it mm, arrow holder. It needs to be, I want it to be brown. Of course, you can use any other color that you like. So I will need to have reflections of brown on the clock. Uh, but first I need to paint it with the base color. I don't like uh, using black as base color for metal because black is so mm, final color. It's like you don't have anything darker than black, you know? So you should really leave it for the darkest hours. The darkest details, the deepest shadows there where you have zero light. And when you're painting metallic clock, you have light. You have contrast, but you have this is not the biggest shadow. So because of that, I create my favorite mixture, which is 50-50 black to black gray. I absolutely love it. And I use it as base color for all my steel and silver NMM because black gray is after all gray and while, while it also have black in name it's it's not that dark this is really something that's should, supposed to be should be called black gray because it's it's almost black but not entirely so it's like it's too dark to just be called gray but too bright to be black it's an absolutely perfect color, just 50-50 black and gray, so, and black gray, so everything works great then. <laughs> okay, so I just need to paint the entire clock with it. Not much to explain here. Um, I've recently started to paint more and more with a paintbrush size 2 and I must say I'm really happy with it. Surprisingly, for most of time I can say that this size 2 paintbrush has a better, more pointy tip than my size 1 brush, which came to me as a surprise. I always felt that, thought that size one is like the best but I was wrong about that this one is of course for smaller details like painting the face a face it's better to have a smaller miniature but I'm not I'm now basically trying to use it always for everything And for bigger surfaces like this, painting a clock with size one brush would be terrible. Okay. Okay. So once again, when it's uh, when it's drying, uh, I can think where to paint reflections. Uh, when you're painting metallic elements, uh, it's the best to paint reflections on these parts that are facing the light. If it's bigger surf bigger surface, so in that case. I'm painting the most concave and the most convex elements, like in here. And this is neutral gray, so I can actually 
paint this entire part with it because after all this is supposed to be metallic but metallic gray uh, clock so it's like you need to have gray color in it because of that so many areas should be just gray I think I should have started with a different color, not with neutral gray. Okay, let's go back to blue gray pale because it's a brighter color, so it will appear only in reflections. Um, yeah, I should have start with it. So when you're marking your reflections on your miniatures to don't get lost in the next steps, it's better to use the brightest color already because I don't know why I decided to use neutral gray. I guess because it's easier to cover dark base color with it Okay, now I look on the reflections on the miniature and these reflections that I can see are most definitely in different places than those that you can see. So you need to just believe me on my word that I'm marking these places that are shining when I'm holding the miniature. Of course, I can also paint without it, uh, just from my head, but then I could paint accidentally a shadow somewhere where the light reflects on the miniature because I was, I could be, I don't know, distracted. And then on the final photos of the miniature, when the light is reflecting in a color, in a place that I wanted to be shaded, it doesn't look great. It's funny how at this stage all of this looks really bad, but in the next, but when the video will be done, I assure you that all of this will look metallic. It always starts like this. Whatever you're painting, oil painting or a miniature, you start with a sketch. And this is a sketch.
Okay, I obviously know that the light reflects here on the edges, so I'm not going to mark this because it will be easier to paint it later without these uh, marks. But I can see that it strongly it reflects strongly in here, so this is the place that I want to mark. Okay, and it reflects strongly in here. Okay. Okay, so now I will gently highlight the rest of the the rest of the hood with black gray. Big areas of the clock uh, should be painted with black grey because, like I said, the dark colors are for shadows, and the clock is supposed to be metallic. So we need to have a lot of grey colors on it. So there will be areas that are lacking here. I will have plenty of neutral grey as the... oh my god. That was a, an accident.
Okay, so now I will make uh, so now we have a bigger sketch. No, not, not entirely. I need to make this reflection much better, much bigger. Yeah, if you are new here, then I'm very chaotic when I'm painting. I'm not that chaotic as today when I'm normally painting, but recording videos and talking in a foreign tongue is, is stressful. So it makes me work in even less organized war, war way than normally. I mean, actually, that's not, that's maybe not even me being not organized because that's when I'm painting, I'm just painting. It doesn't matter which detail I paint after which, it starts to matter only when I'm recording a video. So maybe I'm not that chaotic. Just the situation of recording videos is changing perspective. I don't know. Okay, so what I want to do now is that I want to create uh, smooth transitions on the hood right now. Okay, another reflection in here. Okay, so now I have this great mixture over here and let's use it for creating transitions on the hood first. So I'm very gently touching the surface, very, very gently. I want to leave a very small mark. Imagine that. It's basically the same if I would be painting with uh, color pencils.
Okay, the hood looks pretty good. Let's go. Okay, let's start working on the editors. I think it will be easiest to start with the top. First, I will create transition skin here. A small line in here.
Okay, I know this took forever. And now is the last step, which is painting the final reflection, which of course is in here in the mixture. As you can see, even though I'm using a wet palette, it dried out. It happens. What can I say? So now I can see obviously where I want to have uh, my brightest reflections. And I want one in here. That's for sure. Another one I want here. Here I won't do anything because and this reflection is surrounded with very bright colors. But I will start with highlighting this part. And I'm not going to paint any layers in here. I'm already just painting over it. So yeah, like I mentioned before, you just don't have to create such smooth transitions if you want to have everything quicker. As you can see, creating this transition is taking like half of the total time from painting for me. Like I mentioned before, I can make it even smoother, but when I'm painting on a video and uh, my environment is different and my goal is different well i'm trying to finish a video in more normal time but when i'm just painting i'm listening to an audiobook and i'm just i'm just painting them so things are happening and time is passing by I'm just painting. Then I have better results. That what is funny are probably not visible for anyone uh, who holds the miniature. Well, on, because on the pictures, yeah, my, my this is visible that I created such smooth color transitions. And people sometimes are calling it Photoshop because of that. But you are now looking on my video. And you can see how everything is done. So you now see that this is all real. It's just time consuming. But like I said, I'm not a player, I'm a painter. So my goal is different. And when you're just painting for painting, 
Damn. I must say that um, this is actually quite relaxing when I'm creating these hundreds of tiny stripes and I can see how things are becoming smooth under my brush. This is really relaxing. Therapeutic, I would even say. It helps to calm down. It's really good. If you're stressed out, you should try this out. Just listen to some music on your headphones or an audiobook and try to paint something in this style. Go slowly, enjoy the process, feel sucked in the music or the book and just see how things start to look metallic under your brush. There where we just had uh, spots of paint, now we have pretty metallic clock. Like I said, it's funny how it starts. It's just a few spots of paint that look very chaotic. And then after a while, it starts to look like metal. Okay. I think it's done. I think it's really done. Okay, go by. I'm always pressing the wrong button. Okay, so this is how the clock looks like. I think it looks pretty good, pretty metallic. Of course, yeah, I was I was mentioning early that I will paint brown reflections from this arrow holder on it, but I didn't because uh, it would take more time and my back really hurts and you don't want to see such long videos. And what was most important is to present you how to paint this grey but metallic at the same time clock. And I think that I did it and it looks pretty good. There's the front of the miniature. Yeah, so I think that front looks metallic too. And here is the back. Okay, we would see this guy I guess in this position. Yeah. Okay, so ah. Okay, so this is the main position, I think. Okay. I hope you liked uh, the final result. I like it. So I hope you like it too. And I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you will try out and try my techniques out and do something like this on your own miniatures. Just remember to that it takes time to achieve really good results and it's okay if you don't don't want to do it in the exact way but i hope just that the theory of where to put reflections and how to work with blendings will be helpful for you okay thank you for watching this video and see you on the next one bye